You guys hear that? Yeah. Chris. Colin, you coming on? Yeah, I literally said, oh, that's probably him calling me then. Oh. <laughs> All right, we're ready for you. You just click that link and we'll, we'll get going. Yeah, I'm about to sign in now. All right, cool. Thanks. Bye. All right, y'all. Well, welcome. That's a good way to start a show. Welcome to the Josh and Kuzi show. I guess one day we're going to rebear it. Josh, Kuzi, and Denise Leckie's show. She's here every day. Yeah. But we need, to, we need to just come up with like acronyms instead of putting <laughs> names on there. <laughs> I know. That's a long show title. But um, so what you heard was we have a special guest today who's who's done real estate in a way that I just won't do. <laughs> but he did it for a long time and he like, and, you know, he did it on another team. I'm not going to spoil it now, but basically, um, you know, I will spoil it. He uh, he worked on another team where their whole thing was selling, uh, buying Zillow leads and uh, sending it off to team members to work. And I'm not going to talk too much about it now because we'll wait for him to come in. He's logging in. Really cool guy. He came across my world. He was sent to my uh, coaching program, the pseudo agents from a buddy of mine. And we did a little coaching session. And I'm like, man, how'd you do business before? And he said that we'll get into more details in a little bit. And I'm and I'm like, all right, I want to talk about this on a podcast. People need to hear hear what it's like on that side of uh side of that game. But today I saw um Josh earlier. Very interesting listing uh video shoot we did today. <laughs> yeah, we saw we saw some interesting things that Denise might enjoy. <laughs> oh. Yeah. What was that? What did I miss? So on the on the way to his listing, um I was there earlier. Uh, or early, like 30 minutes early. So I decided to park across the street and start getting some aerial shots. <laughs> As I'm parking, <laughs> there is a totally naked man closing his his uh, trunk. And then kind of right just now, like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then just kind of strolling around his car, looking around and then getting in. So totally nude man. And I, I just happened to <laughs> get a quick video <laughs> to start to <laughs> Of the naked man. <laughs> <laughs> but but actually we found out. So it was interesting because then we went up to the unit that we were shooting, right? And um, the, the homeowner was there. And so Chris is thinking about, okay, what am I going to talk about? It The beach is right there, et cetera. And uh, the homeowner mentions that r across the, the, the beach where you can view out the balcony is a nude beach. And so that explains uh, the nude man, but it still doesn't explain why he was across the street yeah. in a public parking lot. It means that he had to have crossed the road naked. Naked? Oh my! Why did the naked dude? Why did the naked dude cross the road? Right. <laughs> so Denise, I just texted you the video of it. Um, take a look, and while you're looking at it, the funny thing about that, Josh. By the way, Kenna said the same thing. Kenna, my wife, said the same thing. I showed her. Uh -huh. And I'm like, look at this. And she's like, why? He's in the parking why? lot. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. naked. But ass naked. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we said. <laughs> and like, but why? But why? Like, it's not a naked parking lot. You know? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> at least you a can't towel. Get yeah, yeah you're actually, in a public space. What? That's what I mean. Like, once you're outside that beach. You're it's zoned so for closing. <laughs> but think about it. When Josh when when Josh recorded that video, he didn't know that there was a nude beach across the street. He just thought there was a random naked man. And so think about what he had to do. He had his he had a circle around the parking lot, get his phone ready and creep it up over the window to his window record. And at the at the very end, and he's like, you gotta think about how this all played out. If you look at the very end of the video, the guy does a head turn, looks at Josh, and Josh drops his phone real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch yeah, the very end of it. He saw me. He saw me, man. Right there, right at the end. He like kind of did a little turn and looked at me. So. <laughs> you should have been like, but you're naked, dude. Come on. You know what my videos mean? You're naked. You're the oh, one man. Wrong. You gotta be careful, Josh. You have your phone number for the iguana thing on your van. You, you oh, piss yeah. the wrong people off. Oh dude, hey, I'm right. not in the wrong though. He's in the wrong. <laughs> exactly. He's naked in a parking lot. I'm not the oddball. You are. <laughs> like, hey, delete that video or send it to me. And I'd be like, oh, it's too late. It's already on my, um, <laughs> so it, it's crazy. So what separates the nude beach from the quote unquote regular beach? It's just this little like fence. It's not. It's not even like you can see right through it. And if you, but anyways, my point is, like, I did a story on my uh, Instagram and Facebook today, panning across. Of course, you can't see anything. We're, we're along the 18th floor across the street, and you'll notice on the nude side of the beach, Denise, it's packed. Like 
like I'm like first of all, these I people don't have jobs. Uh, well, <laughs> if you do, I uh, do. I was in playing earlier. I want to go to this beach. I've always wanted to go to a nude beach. <laughs> okay. Well, it, it's there. It's there for the taking. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, oh, that that also that also brings it's up a like funny story. On my bucket list. <laughs> I I've I've been to one, so I've been to one, but in a very weird scenario. So, um, I I went to one. My my mom had two gay male friends, right? And I guess they one day invited her to come alongside to to the nude beach, and for some reason she thought it was a good idea to bring me along, but I was probably like. 12 or 13 years that, you're, old. Too, you're, you're too old for that and i i thought i thought that we were going to a regular beach so it it took me like a few minutes to kind of realize what was going on you must have been like <laughs> yeah i basically kind of just went off and played on the sand by myself <laughs> and just avoided contact by yourself. so is that a gay is, is that a gay thing going to new beaches well, you find a lot of men that go. Yeah, it's it, not a lot of women like to kind of just hang around. Well, besides Denise, but I want to go. See, that's yeah, fascinating. See? I, I I wonder, like, okay, I don't. But know. I didn't know that. I didn't know that part that it was yeah. mostly. It is. It is a lot of guys. Well, at least when I went. Look, I don't have the, the most experience with gay beaches, but what I'm saying is but that you, when I went, <laughs> you have, you've been to more than we have, Joseph. right? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I don't know. It might be a a duet thing, or it might just be like kind of male heavy. I don't know, but you you can go check it out. It's we know where the beach is. That is so odd. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder why that's a thing in that community. I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't think it was. Guys are a little bit more more free, more kind of like expressive yeah. out there. Just. <laughs> but that just shows you, that just shows you like the craziness. Yeah, that just shows you the craziness of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like the human brain, right? It it's so there's so many like shades of the brain. How like because you think oh, about yeah. it, like, because like if they're they're homosexual male, so they're attracted to other men, right? So then you think, well, maybe they have a maybe brain waves much like a female, but you don't see a bunch of females all hanging out at nude beaches, right? Like like are are that interested in the male genitalia where they're gonna go to a, a nude beach and stare at? Well, maybe Denise actually. Now we just. Well, I, no, think, I, I think I think I think men, I think men I think well away. well that's what I mean that's what I mean I think men and women have very different reactions to to sexual genitalia like you'll yeah. you like when the when a man sends you think that when, well look when a man sends a a dick pic versus like a, a, a girl <laughs> sending you something it's a much different reaction it's it's a it ill we're like ill why did you never, say that <laughs> I, ne- I I never I never understood that like. First off, first off, like uh, why, why in the world? Let's say, let, let's say that the person on the other side, like a female, was something that she was into seeing. But aren't you scared that now she has this like image of your crotch forever on her phone? Like, well, it's like, different with the internet. It's definitely oh, yeah, different. Yeah, <laughs> but your face isn't there either, so they kind of have to like, oh, let me whose penis is this? Is it you're gonna put it by your face and be like, oh, that's person. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I recognize that hair. <laughs> <laughs> but that's so, I don't know, it's just so weird. I could never imagine myself doing that. I mean, you must be in a weird state of mind, like, to take a snap of that. And there you go. I don't know. You it, well, like you said, it's a, there's a... Think if someone wants to see that. Yeah. But Look, that's, it's well, just... That's the thing. It's, well, it's a that, wide variety of a big spectrum of people and how yeah. our brains operate. So just like you were saying, it's just there's all these in-betweens of what people think is a good idea or not or what people enjoy. <laughs> so, Well, it kind of it kind of reminds me of like we I think we spoke about this in a previous uh, podcast where um, you'll see females who um, like who are realtors, but they're like half naked in their Instagrams and stuff like that. Or they're, at least they'll be dressed in a certain way. You mm-hmm. know, like, who are you attracting exactly? Like what's your what's your end game here you know like i don't know the angle out the angle is kind of more clear (laughs) (laughs) but like is that what you really is that what you really want to be known as but i'm trying to i'm trying to find our dude uh colin over here oh no well we got him in the chat we can actually bring him on He's he's oh, been he's we, been listening to our our crazy conversations for quite a while. Oh, I didn't know. That. <laughs> oh, sorry, Colin. I didn't know you could hear us. All right, know. let me uh let me bring him on, and then Chris, you could introduce him. 
All right. So uh, this show. is this is Colin, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I, and I told you we had a real estate podcast. I I bet you weren't expecting to listen in about dick pics, dick pics, and new beaches before you came on, huh? Oh, man, let it rip, let it rip. <laughs> yeah, th- that's what they do there. Apparently, they let it rip. but 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 you know what it's it's real estate related because we're talking about a listing where we were at and that's the view you know that's that was uh either a selling point chris had to make the decision which he did make the decision to to mention that on the video that we made so people can take that as a selling point or a con i don't know how people are going to take that one that's going to be interesting (laughs) i just wonder if they the people live yeah, you know it's weird, right? Everyone a, a niche niche market, but like, do people sit on bin- with binoculars up there and like, you know? That's what, that's you what should I was do a survey, too. Chris. You should do a survey. And <laughs> we, we get, you're gonna door knock. Hey, hey by the way, <laughs> do, you, do you, put it on Instagram. Do want to do a survey on IG and see see what the people have to say. Well, it's funny you say that because I did do that and I asked, <laughs> "Would you rather?" Um, your girl came up on my Instagram as soon as I as soon as I pin in, went in there, Josh. Uh-huh. Um, but I did. Uh, I did. I said, which do you prefer? I had a picture of it, a covered beach or a nude beach. 100% says nude. Really? Two votes, oh, though. See? Two votes. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone else was like, I'm not That's sure. Not a lot of data. Of yeah, it's not a lot of data. <laughs> Out of 84 people saw it, though, only two people voted. And take a wild guess. Your boy, Andres Sandoval. He said <laughs> of yes. Course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Denise saw Andres. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do. Yeah, I've done he's, a few jobs for him. We work we we do a uh, a lot of video work together. He's, cool he's definitely a, he's a great guy, definitely a memorable personality that guy. You yeah. know, he, Who's he with he's now? Is he... Well, he's coming he's coming back to uh Kittle? Keller Williams. Last time I spoke with him. Oh, is he? Oh. Okay. He was with the EXP. He said he's he's moving back to to Keller Williams, so you guys will see him. At, I, I think he's going to be at your office. Well, um, of course I'll, I mean just when you it's so weird it's kind of like like even our team denise when people come in they're new agents this is why we're not really doing new agents anymore they come in new agents they don't realize all the cool stuff that they have and then mm-hmm. and then they're like oh okay this is what real estate's like this is kind of cool i'm gonna try this stuff on my own and then they don't do shit but it's kind of like that with keller williams though like when people enter this like a i was saying this who was i saying this to they're asking why am i with them it was um Gosh, I don't remember what it was. I was talking to somebody else. But anyway, so we're talking about why Why do we go to K-Dub? And I was like, well, I'll tell you what. I wasn't with them for my first 10 years in the business. But when we got pregnant with our first kid, um, I decided to take it seriously. So I went to all the brokers in town just to see what they offer, what they can do, and how they can help me grow. Every single one, Denise, and you probably know about this. Colin, not yet, but maybe you will one day. Um, every single one spoke about leads. That, that, mm-hmm. like we got leads it's leads it's leads but then i'm like okay i guess that's normal but then when i went to instagram on instagram what am i talking about then i went to keller williams <laughs> it, listen it's late i told y'all this is like my midnight for you guys so anyways mm-hmm. when i went to um when i went to keller williams um they didn't say one word about leads it was about how can we grow your business let's mm-hmm. turn you into a business person and i was just blown away by i'm like yep this is where i want to be i want to be i just don't want to be a lead chasing agent i want to grow a business which is a perfect segue it always works out this way and, and, and what, what? what do they say teach a man to fish right what, what's, what's right. the saying i don't know but i've been teaching you to fish that. for a long time you need to start catching them oh. hi colin how are you doing she today thank you for coming she, <laughs> she don't even remember the saying <laughs> I know. She, she, maybe you should have wrote that down before you start saying it <laughs> Y'all don't know the saying? It's a, it's a popular saying. <laughs> Teach a man to fish. No, give a man a fish and you, you'll feed him for a night. Teach a man to fish a, and you'll feed him for life. You're like the George Bush. You're like the George Bush, the famous George Bush quote. He's like, fool me once. Oh, uh, never fool. Fool me. Tw- never get fooled again. Who is here? So it, uh, this is this is the quote you're trying to say. It's like give a give a man a fish and you feed him for a you. day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. That's the That's word. That's what I said. That's what I said. <laughs> you stumbled on uh, f- eat a fish. <laughs> what are you doing with the fish? Red Jump fish, fish. <laughs> blue fish, one fish, two fish. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, good lord! Hi, Colin. Um, <laughs> so, Chris, in- introduce Colin. Who do who do we have here? Well, maybe we should. 
Maybe mm-hmm. we should. I, I gave a little intro, a brief, brief, brief intro. We're going to dive in deeper. Basically, uh, he was working on another real estate team. I'm not sure if it's appropriate to say their name. Pretty big team. And so I was fascinated by this other real estate team and how how they grew. And I'm like, so what's the model? What's the, I kind of already knew they were big. They're in bed with Zillow. But I wanted to know more, right? Um, and yeah, he was like, yeah, I worked on this person's team. And basically, it's just that they you go on, you get a bunch of Zillow leads. Your job is to call the Zillow leads. You stop calling them and you're pretty much done. And um, I'm like, oh, it's kind of shitty. Well, how did that go? And he was like, kind of shitty. So I'm like, well, let's get on and talk about it. So with that, is that accurate so far, Colin? Uh, uh, you know, the thing is nuanced, right? I would say. Right. Um, but yeah, and I'm not, I, I have nothing bad to say, but I think it's different. What you just said, ironically, is I wasn't being, uh, um, trained or mentored to grow a business for me. Right. Um, was, was that, you know, I was a hog in their business. Yeah. I was, I was the leverage basically. Mm. You're yeah. you're expendable. So that is a that is a very traditional model for a lot of teams that I've experienced in my career where most of the people running the teams they have very little I'm not saying all, but a lot a lot. And Denise could probably confirm this. They have very little interest in growing the individual people on their team. They just need bodies to do the unpleasant tasks that they don't want to do right. in order to help yeah. them make some money, not worrying about Colin's kids or Denise's son or any of that stuff. And I saw that and it was one of the big reasons why I never want to uh, create a team because I'm like, I'm not going to really create a team unless I have the ability or at least have some kind of footing to help them be better people all around it, you know, and grow their, and grow their family. I don't know. I just have a distaste for that model. Because it's just always so. What happened? So I'll tell you what. So what happened? So you you joined the, you joined a team, right? And they give you leads, and and that's pretty much it. You know anything? You know what to say, what to do, or anything? No, absolutely. Well, a big part of the process was the training. Right. So the training is stellar. Oh, good. Right. So so with the training, you know, pretty we train. Every day, right? So eight thirty every was daily meeting, Monday to Friday, without fail, right? Um, so we had, you know, product knowledge, market knowledge, and we did scripts. Um, and then we would have actually it was two meetings that we would have every week, and then we would have, have what they call success and opportunity. So if you could imagine. Imagine like be a dojo, you have black belts, more senior people, and then you have like the newer green belts. So the white and green belts went to success and opportunity. And we had essentially a coach, right? So every day you, you know, what's, what's your numbers, what challenges, you, what could you do to overcome whatever problem you have, etc. So we had community every day right and this was very started selling uh january 21 right so you know i was new so this i knew yeah right so um a lot of community a lot of um and help to basically convert your job is to convert right so that's why yeah actually what we think the system was was built and I just got plugged to it. You got plugged into it. I'm actually like pleasantly surprised that there was a daily uh like coaching session. They covered current market data and and scripts and all that stuff. So we meet on our team every day at four thirty in the afternoon. Not even in the mornings. Um you know uh so who because you know it's pretty much me running the meetings, but who runs your who runs your meetings in the morning? Was it the team owner or was it like a um i don't know uh yeah so someone else correct so first meeting brokerage owner kicks off the meeting 
and I think you have a delay, so I'm not hearing what you're saying. Unless he's saying. So you're asking, oh, yeah, asking who, asking. who leads the leader. So the first lead is led by the owner, right? And the leadership. Um, second meeting is with your with the Do I have a delay? Yeah. No, you're good now. I think Do I, I have, have a delay? delay though. It no, could be no, the system. Good. Yeah, I'm I'm seeing everything in sync. Should be fine. Yeah, I'm seeing everything fine too. I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, it's all good. But we get the basic gist out of it. So, yeah. you know, for, for for new agents listening, you know, they have to make the decision how they want to do their business, right? And they don't really know the opportunities that may or may not exist, or what's normal, what's not normal. And I guess that's the kind of the idea of this episode here. And what fascinated about my conversation with Colin was that that's what he knew. Like he worked at AT and T for the longest time wanted to find another type yeah. of uh, career path, ended up in a, a lead calling type uh, team. But I'll be real, most lead calling teams don't do, well, at least from what I have experienced and what I've seen, and Denise, you could tell me if you're you're the same or different, they don't do any type of training at all. They're usually like, oh, here's a bunch of leads, call them and try to, and try to close them. Um, so I like how they did that. I like how they did that. The problem with that, all that though, and that I've seen is that once you lead, you did all that work, right? So life is, you're supposed to be building your business on top of your business or, or constantly working on your business. You know, it's not supposed to be a maintenance thing. It's not supposed to be like cutting your grass, going back next week and cutting it again because it grew, right? Like you're not, you didn't get anywhere every week you cut your grass. So it, it's really supposed to be, you're growing your business in order for it to compound over time. Um, and a lot of that is the, you know, working your, your database model, your sphere of influence. So anyways, what I'm saying is, that lead model that uh, so many people are used to, or that's all they know, it never really attracted me to either be a part of it or create a team of it because one, this, the data clearly states that's not the best way to grow anyone's business. And two, the people within your team are going to come and go. So you can't really get in. They're going to come and go because they're going to get burnt out. They're going to be sick of working for other people's names. And let's be real. They're, they're not, that's not what they got into real estate for, right? So I'm always like, why would you do that? It only benefits really one person long term, and that's the broker owner, right? Am, or am I wrong? Oh, you're correct. You're absolutely correct, and that's exactly, you know. So after, you know, when I started, I I'm gonna hit the ground running hard because I had some familiarity, right? So after six nine months, I started looking around and like, on oh, yeah, I'm coming from a company where. I was there for full of 14 years and I was at the bottom, right? You had there for 20, 30 years, easy. So I'm here and it's all well, even after three, six months and it just yep. continued happening on here. You know, I know business and I know it's always to recruit, right? You always want to recruit the best so that you could keep them, not have to constantly replace them. Yeah. You know, when I started seeing that happening, I started to ask myself, what's going on here? What is this model? Right? And then, for sure, I started to answer those questions and I realized the model is owner rather than pro agent in actuality. You know, if you knew, mm. there's a trade off, right? So if you knew, like I was, training the product knowledge market knowledge, reps, patients, definitely valuable. You know, that has transferred today into what sure. I'm doing. Um, but from a marketing standpoint, um, and a business, business ownership stand, you don't, you don't get the benefits of the work that you put in. It doesn't follow you, I, I don't think. Yeah, that's what I was saying before. It's like once you're unplugged from that system you're pretty much a square one again minus a little bit of knowledge mm -hmm. about scripts and stuff and that's i think that's uh that must be utterly frustrating especially if you have three kids right i do yeah oh yeah a father of three right and then you're like okay i gotta feed these guys these little stinkers and i don't really have any any growth in the career i just started i wasted all that time um to an extent i mean so me, that's how i always saw it 
No, go. Go ahead. So for me, like, I got burnt out at 12 months. I mean, I stayed for 15, right? Christmas, when it was Christmas 21, I'm like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because <laughs> I, I was expecting a slowdown. Right into Christmas, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to grind. So in January, you know, I have, you know, a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of, well, the exact opposite happened. You know, so. Well, what do you mean the exact habit? So the leads slow down is what you're saying? So my expectation was if I put in a lot of work, let's say October, November, come December, January, when people are taking Christmas off, et cetera, I already have business in the on closings to kind of get through that slow period. Yeah, that was look. That was that was kind of looking at it as if the competition went down, but the business stayed up, um, like stayed level, and you're grabbing more business, right? Because you're like, okay, trying, less yeah. people are working to get this business. Right. Right? I, was trying to stay, I call it staying ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is which isn't a bad play, by the way, because by you won't make your money on that downturn of the season. You'll make your money on the on the upturn because you're still going, and as the, as the business is picking up, you're grabbing more of the share. Very normal, by the way. But there's a great book I don't have it here. It's called Shift, somewhere over here, which talks about not just shifting in markets on the whole, which we're experiencing now, but seasonal shifts, Colin. So in that book, it's really really good. Um, they talk about how they show all the data, and there's a natural lull in real estate transactions. I believe it starts at the end of October and it really just uh, hits the crest or the low point in January. And then it starts creeping back up and it's very, very normal for a lot of real estate agents to either get out of the business or just stop working during, during that time. Right. And then all of a sudden it comes February and March and they have no money in their bank account. They're freaking out. It's a very, so as long as you're, you stay aware that the market's going to dip, because you hopefully I can maybe this would be something for people to you know learn through here and not the hard way is that when the market's really really hot when you're making all those deals you know the uh, March April May June July even August um, those months those six months don't go spending that money you put well you should always put thirty percent thirty to thirty one percent in your in your uh, your spending account. But if you don't, you put the rest of that money for in your account, so that way you're smart and it starts slowing down. And you're not freaking out. Even it took me a couple of years to realize that naturally. But then when I read the book, I'm like, why didn't I just read the damn book five, six years ago? I <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Then right. I, I wouldn't know. Hindsight. So yeah, hi, right? hindsight, right? Mm -hmm. So with okay, so you got burnt out, right? And I'm sure as a father like you, and I have a lot of kids also. You're like, okay. I'm going to imagine it if I was in your shoes. I'm like, okay, I don't really know what my other options are. I'm not going back to my other company, which was ATT, because you said in your you said that you were at the bottom for a bit, right? So that's not that's not something you obviously left there for a reason. And this real estate thing, I'm kind of getting burnt out here, and I don't really like it that much the way it is. So you must have some a lot of stress and anxiety at that point. I mean, I imagine I would. What am I going to do to feed these kids? What am I going to do next? What is the next step? So, A, did that happen? And if, if that happened, B, what was your next step? All right. So, the anxiety never stops, right? It's just management, mm -hmm. right? I'm still, I'm still concerned today as I speak to you right now, right? Um, but when I looked around, I said, okay, agent, I'm an independent contractor. I'm taking a risk. Now, the way how the compensation was set up is when you do a deal, you know, let's say the typical commission sent on a side, right? That 3% actually being 1% to me. Yeah. Because there were two other parties that had to eat off of that too. You got what I'm saying? That, okay. So the broker had one, Zillow had one, and you had one. Right? Right. So yeah. my piece was actually less than one, but I'm just saying one plicity, right? <clears throat> so I say, okay, listen, you know, pay anything up front for the leads. You know, I get it. It's a trade-off. What if what if I took that same 
taking risks and instead of just depending on me, me go and get it myself. So started, when I made the decision that I was going to step away from model, like I said, the curve, while I was still there, I was making prospect and have some experience from wholesale. Right. When I worked at AT&T, I have data. So I said, you know what, let me go back to this data that I have and like hit in the phones, like 60, 60 contacts a day. So I drummed oh. up as much leads as I possibly can. So I was leaving. And then maybe a month after I left, I took three listings. And then I okay. went to San right? So I said, okay, well, I'm taking this, being free lot from independent contractor but it's being mitigated because i'm getting free so mm -hmm. all i need to do is the risk is going to see the final lease on my own but at mm -hmm. close, i don't have to share with anybody you know? so you know i did i did yeah. uh i did a, i did one close since leaving Two, and I have one pending right now. So that's kind of like a little bit okay, but I'm looking for more, right? I still want to... As you should. Build a business and uh, be in a community, right? So I want to be around people doing well, so that kind of pulls me up. Right now, I'm just so. Yeah, well, the people you surround yourself is super key. I, you know, I always I tell people on our team all the time, you got to level up who you surround yourself with. Level up to five people you're around. You know, uh, you see it all the time. We see people that uh, when they surround ourselves with a certain, I guess, mindset of people, they get stuck in that mindset. And uh, you know, so if you, yeah. so that's why one of the other things on our team that was so important to me, and I'm, and I learned the hard way a few times, but so important to me was I need to make sure it's just winners on the team, right? Because winners attract winners, winners feed a winner's attitude or mindset. So moving forward is like that winner's mentality because you get that one, you get that one shitty personality and they just pull you down. You get that one loser. They just pull you down. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's true, right, Denise? And we've, no, we've, it is. It's like a know, cancer. It really is. So moving forward, we, we got really, really deep into um, our hiring process because of that. So with the addition, and this is how, like, I've heard from your people like you so many, so many times. Like, this is the the model that you guys face. And I'm like, well, that, that just doesn't make sense. Because the number one way to grow a happy business in any type of business is to create self-branding and marketing tools and tell your story in unique ways with your audiences by, but with you select who your audience is. So when people call you, you're not scripts, you're not this, you're not that. My little, little, like my relationships with my, uh, with my, with my clients is just like, that, that, that's my boy over there whatever. Like today, Josh. So, cause mm -hmm. I picked, I pick, I pick my people. So today we had a listing <clears> video, <throat> walk up and the guy selling it, Albert, he had, he had his giant ass hat on for some reason. I haven't seen this guy in like two years. And I'm like, I'm like, what the, what the fuck's up with the hat, man? You're hiding a pigeon in there, you know? Like, that's the relationship I have with my clients and not worried about, you know, you know, worried about getting fired. And I chose my clients and I teach my team how to choose your clients, how to get, how to connect with your clients and um, how to actually have an enjoyable business. Um, you know, so I don't know. I kind of feel bad that people go into that lead model, the lead model way. It's, it's, it's stressful as hell. It really is. So yeah, it is. I have a question. Um, so um, it's low that... conversion, you know, pretty low conversion. Uh, people clicking on a button online, right? And the button literally okay to take a tour, right? So their mindset is you just shouldn't. I'm just taking a view. That's it. You know? Yeah, they don't yeah. realize that your time is valuable. Right. So that is an inherent conflict. You know, at, at meeting. No, that it's only buyers and you can't build a business with buyers. Right. Right. So look, how, how do you, you know, so, th so that our, our listeners get a lesson out of this, how do you, first off, two parter. So is this a common business model within the industry where it's one yeah. guy and he's basically just calling call center people? 
um, just to talk with Zillow leads. Second, how do you, as a new agent or if you're just getting started in the business, how do you spot that quickly so that you don't end up spending six, 12 months in that cycle before you decide, all right, I need to leave and move to a different model. So how do you spot that early on? Well, you would walk in into it, right? So typically, if they're running a similar, you know what you're getting into up front. Well, let me put it a different way. You, it's disclosed up front, but patient, what happens is the people that tend to uh, work within that system, their brand into the business. Yeah, they know so better. They, and that's what happened right. to me. Mm-hmm. Right. So my rationale was, well, I don't have any leads, right? I have some people that I know, but I don't know who's going to transact. If you're going to give me, you know, if you're telling me that for every, what did it tell me? For every 10 appointments you go on or 15 appointments you go on, you action. And I do the math. If I get two transactions a month, Right, but then to the system, and you realize how much work that you know, is. <laughs> I take I take like let's say in a week, I take I go on seven appointments in one week. You know, and you build up your pipeline. You do two closings after three months, and you get one percent. Like like I just said mm-hmm. earlier, right? Mm. Okay. I'm just starting off. Maybe it's me. I'm not good enough, right? Um, so to answer your question, it's going to be disclosed up front. You're going to know what you're walking into. Uh, but how is to convert, right? So at some point, it could be you or it could be the market. You never know, right? And uh, I think the owners of that model benefit or capitalize on people that just aren't familiar, right? They don't That's know it, it mm-hmm. right? So it's and a it's, good it's starting really point. It's a good starting point, right? So I always looked at it as, okay, this is a risk to have, but you definitely need to layer on top of it. It can't be the only thing. Mm. I don't know. I would argue that's a horrible base. <laughs> I wouldn't well, want to do anything. Because to do it's, not sustainable. <laughs> it's not right, sustainable. It's not. Right. You're going to get burnt. You're going to get burnt. You know what happens? When, when you start thinking about, okay, well, what can I do to make my situation better? I think oftentimes the answer is I need to get this. Mm. For me, when I, when, I, when I thought of what could I do, and I said, well, if I, I don't have any say right? Meaning every single appointment I go on, I can't decide if I want to continue doing this or not. I have to follow up with that. Oh. Right? Oh. Yeah. No. So uh, with us, mm-hmm. if anyone's disrespectful in any other way or they, or they stand them up or whatever, I said, no, you, you, you need to teach people how to treat you. And if they're going to disrespect you, then you need to, you gotta, you gotta get out your time. I think you would be better suited spending your time building your business instead of spending that time chasing, you know, I don't know, the, whatever, chasing people around and wasting your time. Um, but in order to Josh, for my answer to that question, is it a normal thing about the industry? And I'll say, yes, what well, you got to understand. So business is about when you enter the business, you're not creating more business. You're not like, like if I enter the Sharpie salesman game, I'm not getting more people interested in buying Sharpies. I'm mm-hmm. taking business from other Sharpie salesmen, salesmen, right? Market share. Yeah. Taking market share. Right. I didn't, I didn't create that. Um, people are like, you know what? Chris isn't the Sharpie sales. I want a Sharpie. It doesn't work that way. The same thing with real estate. So you have to find a way to either for people to know what, uh, know what you are and what you do. And you have two ways to do it. You can do what Colin and the lead thing people do. They just call, 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 right? Um, and they can either buy the leads themselves or someone else can buy it for them, whatever. Most people don't have money when they start, so they choose that route. Fine. Or you could develop, create a product where you're no longer a commodity. You're no longer just another 
realtor. You have a unique product and a unique value proposition, and you're telling your stories and then a story, and you make people want to connect with you and call you. So they're and in my and that is a compounding effect, right? So that's a compounding effect. So you can take you can create a relationship with someone, right? And they can hire you and you can become friends and you can do you can do a systematic approach to communicate them like in an organized way and become and pick the people that you want to work with. Here's my updated list that I printed today. So I was done with the old one. And then you can create relationships with the people where they tell everyone about you because everyone knows someone who's looking to buy or sell. It's just who, and they go, I, I, I don't know who to call. Who do you know? Chris, call Chris, call Chris, call Chris. Right. And that sales already done. All I got to do is not fuck it up. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's the kind of business model I always wanted to create with my people, but that only works. So this only works if I am teaching Colin or Denise how to sell them. Right. Mm -hmm. You're selling you. You're just under my umbrella, right? You're selling you and what you do. So instead of us giving paying money to give them leads, we do one on one coaching to show them how to tell their story, build their business, and market to their people in different modalities to connect with them on a human level, so that they that one sale that they turn in from what what so and so turns into three more, and out of those three turns into nine, and it just goes. Mm -hmm. And in so basically, one year, we're marketing and investing in ourselves. So whereas I think the other teams are paying out money for the leads, we're putting that money into ourselves and developing our team. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the biggest difference. And that's sustainable because we're growing, we're learning, and we, we're progressing. And in, in, in turn, getting more clients and getting, you know, getting more customers that way. So I think that's, a must, that's sustainable. That's the most, a better use of your money rather than throwing it at these lead companies. But Denise, for you, that's great. For the people on the team, for me, there's a lot of risk there, right? So let's say if I mm -hmm. build Denise up and she, all of a sudden she's just killing it based on all of her systems and models. And then she's like, you know what? Thanks for pushing me down the hill. I'm mo I'm, I got my momentum. I could spend all that time, money, and energy building a business for you to now t essentially take business from me from mutual databases and stuff like that, which has happened. A couple of people, you know, go ahead, Josh. That, that, that's a good question because that, that leads me to what do you do as a team lead to create an environment that helps people stick around or makes your team want to stick around? Because that's totally different than what they're doing, right? You you have a different job. You need to make it so that your team still wants to stick around once they have the skill sets to be self-sustaining. Well, so many things happen for the team members that they don't have to do anything for. Mm -hmm. We have what's called smart plans on marketing. So they get, they, they'll pick what's called the dream 300 people and we market them in very specific ways in all different ways from, uh, from email, regular mail. Uh, we create audiences on Facebook and Google and, you know, we do a lot of tons of things that let's be real. If they try to recreate that on their own, it's not going to happen. Um, it's not going to happen. So, but the thing is, I don't want to ever hold people to, I don't want to have handcuffs on people. I always mm -hmm. say, listen, you want to go, you want to go. Mm -hmm. If some people have fine, but this, the stop that from having from happening now moving forward is it's really, really hard to get on a team. It's, uh, we get asked a lot. And the reason why is because I make it go through a very, very long process. It's called career visioning very long process. And I look at it this way, if it's four to five months of going through this process and they no longer have interest in doing it, then there's no way they're going to stay with me for life. I want people who's going to stay with me for life. And the overall vision, at least for us, is different. So the overall vision is that I want to be focusing on coaching, training, growing the business and growing the businesses of other people, right, Josh? And then also expanding out in other regions where people on our team can manage different regions. So for example, let's say, let's say um, I no longer have to be in sales to fill the coffers up myself, right? I didn't have to go on that listing video today. It could have been someone else, right? We're not mm -hmm. there yet. And then, so I can know all those things are running behind the scenes. And then I can focus on building up coaching and training courses, going around the, going around the country and the state and making little hubs. So let's say if we're in or the Orlando area and we have five Keller Williams offices and we have uh, five homes by koozie uh, hubs or not hubs expansion teams in that little area. Now I can go, Hey, Denise, your job in addition to all this, 
you go to Orlando once a month, you meet with all those people, you go to different offices and see how we can help them. What are we missing? How can the home spike, you know, the models and systems, how can you grow them? And in exchange for that, she gets a percentage of all those sales. Right. And then Colin can go to the Tampa area and he can run five or six offices goes once a month, same thing. Boom. Um, so there's different ways to grow your business in there. So the model for me, basically what I was saying is Josh, I want to build people's businesses, build their businesses and also create really unique, uh, leverage tools and future opportunities that if they leave, they would be stupid. And but they can't but even I get think I, on a team of two. But I think it goes beyond that. I think it goes to like with our team, it's just that I feel it's our team. Mm -hmm. Whereas other teams, it's you know, you're just not an employee, but you 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 you're a leverage. They're leveraging you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's, it's like what Colin said earlier. That's not the feel in our team. It's, we are in this together. We're working together for a common goal. And again, it all goes back to how you make people feel. If you make us feel like we are members of this together and we're growing it together, then we feel invested. You know, like it's it's our it's us our team and our future that we're building. So if 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 Chris is building all these extended teams and expansion teams, then it's like we're we're all growing. It's just not Chris growing. We're all growing. And, and again, and, it goes back to how you make people feel. You can make me feel like I'm part of the team, and oh yeah, I'm in it. Let's do this. Let's do that. Or, or are you just using me to build you up and build your brand? And then you're gonna have people leaving. The turnover is gonna be ridiculous. In and out. And I, I think it goes back to how you make people feel. That's so make you feel good, like, Denise. <laughs> That's interesting because like we, we also talk about how like like buyers and sellers or, or, or buyers, you know, buy on emotion, right? Because, like, a lot of that, mm -hmm. too, is, like, how you make them feel. And then when you talk about what makes you stay on the team, it's, like, you know, how you feel. Like, how Chris or how the environment makes you feel, which is interesting. Because, like, it takes it away from, like, it really, when you think about real estate and the job that you do, you think about, like, numbers and tasks, yeah. et cetera. But in reality, it's, like, more of, like, this, like, relationship that you're having with people. And so, yeah, if you have good connections and, and the environment is good, then kind of everything just kind of works out. <laughs> well, it kind of does. Even yeah. like, mm -hmm. No, Denise, sorry. Go, no, no, you. I talk all the time. You talk. Yeah, I, I forgot now. Go ahead. Are you serious? What? <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say, for real? <laughs> for real, I forgot. Go ahead. I'm serious. <laughs> well, I, I, see, I, that's it. So I was kind of fascinated with Colin's thing because uh, it was one of the top teams in the state, if not, yeah, maybe the top team. And just to hear that that's how they run it. But I was like, I never heard of him. I only heard of that in one name, right? And mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I just kind of, I, I never wanted to be into a, a run a team or a business where it's, I hate when people, I shouldn't say hate, I dislike when people go, I want to be on your team. This is your team. Like, no, it's not. No, it's not. I just, mm. I have the vision. I have the experience. I have the energy, right, to run it. And I have the discipline to run it. But that's because I'm just running it. I'm the quarterback, but I can't do shit without my freaking lineman. I can't do shit without my running back or my wide receivers, right? And if my wide receivers drop the ball, I lose too. So, you know, that's kind of a good analogy because it's football season, but Again, why we're so picky now of who we bring on, we bring into a process. And if they're happy, like you said, so we went to a team lunch, which Denise wasn't there for. We went through a team lunch on Friday. The and, only one um, I've missed. <laughs> on Friday. You missed one of them, by the way. Lunch. 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 Sorry, lunch, lunch, <laughs> lunch. I, I know. A team <laughs> lunch. W once a month, we go out and have drinks, right? Um, together. It's on the team. No, we've gone, we've gone, we pay miniature golf. We've done different things than to go drinking. Well, you, you, you took it. Yeah, you, 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 you didn't drink at mini golf. And that wasn't so. When, when, hold on. When are you guys doing like the team? The team nude beach. You guys are gonna oh. do that. I'm pretty sure that would lead to a divorce. <laughs> but it's work related. To get, dude, to get back. <laughs> to get back into the culture, let's get let's get let's realign ourselves. To get yeah, back yeah. in the culture is like when we go on the team lunch, we're all we're all friends and family. We all support each other, right? Um, because you have a so the way we build each other's businesses is the relationship model with the people already in your life, 
right? So Denise is not competing for leads with Colin and Colin's not to lead, compete with leads, this and that, you know, you have your, what you call your dream 300. They have their dream 300 and that's what we focus on. So very little of this commingling uh, comes or competition comes into play because we all have different databases that we're, that we're having relationships with. Um, and so we help each other. So, you know, I need to help with the showing the other day. And Marissa's like, I got you. And she showed one of my listings and, you know, I'm going to yeah. give her, I'm going to, I'm going to give her some money at the closing probably because of it. Of course on the HUD, if Frex listening, of course, but, <laughs> um, you know, I'm going to make sure she does it, but she doesn't want that. She was just, she's just helping a team, you know, and that's, that's what it's, that's what it's all about. If you just get the right people who are there for each other, there's no competition. It legit is like a family. It really is. And uh, you, your customers feel that. Your clients feel that. I don't know. That's how I vision the growing the team, and it's we're doing it. You know what? That, that reminds me of a question I wanted to ask earlier, too, about, in general, how different real estate teams really view each other. Like, in the industry of real estate, since – Essentially, it kind of is like a competition between broker brokerages, right? Because it's all about, you know, capturing a piece of the market. Mm. Um, how do you view how do in, in general how do you view other teams? Is like is it like is it like a competition? It. No. Is it yeah? yeah is it like though. something that doesn't cross your mind, right? Because like when I when I see you do events, right, you'll do coaching events, and there's not only your Keller Williams uh, brokerages there, but there are multiple brokerages, right? Yeah, Sometimes so you take like little jabs, like for joking, right? But oh, at yeah. the same time, you're showing everyone in the industry who can essentially be a competition to you what you do, right? So I was just wondering how in general real estate or realtors view other teams, but I'm guessing it does. if it doesn't cross your mind. It goes mind, back to mindset. No, yeah. it does cross some mind. Some people's mind, mm. though, I would say that. But it goes. Oh God, yeah. If you have a scarcity mindset, because you have some agents that they will share nothing. If you mm. ask questions, they're just like, oh, well, figure mm. it out. But it's a scarcity mindset. Then you have teams like ours, and you know, like Chris, and he'll tell you everything. And right. th again, that goes back to the individual, because you can give everybody the plan. That doesn't mean they're going to work it. And most yeah. won't. They use it. I mean, so, most won't. They could. But at the end of the day, you can't replicate you. No one can replicate you. There's people listening to this podcast right now who really have no interest in ever hiring me, but they might hire Denise or Colin because they like him, right? So it, it, there's so many people out there. And if you build your database and work to people that you want to be around, chances are they're going to hire you. And if not, well, it's okay. They just something came up that you just didn't fit, and it's fine. But I can't say this. I didn't always think that way. Um, when I first started doing really, really well in the methods that I, you know, that I help with other people now, I didn't want to share it. They would ask me at Keller Williams all the time, "Teach it, teach it, teach what you do. What do you do is unique. You don't cold call. You don't call expires at Fizzbox. Your phone rings all the time. He's like you don't do all that. I'm like, no, I don't. I have no interest in doing any of that." Like, oh, oh, teachers, teachers. And I just refused because I always thought back then, like, okay, they're going to steal my secrets and they're going to steal my clients. And I will say there were times when I taught people with mutual databases who used some of my systems and tools who, who took deals here and there. And I had a very scarcity mindset then. I was like, oh my God, I'm never teaching again because they stole this. But at the end of the day, it was like, you know what? You get more out of life the more you help than you lose. So if you lose a deal right. here and there, I'm going to create a coaching program, which is going to attract a Denise and Denise is now in my world. And then Colin, who knows, you know, I'm going to track the coaching program where his buddy, Dwayne is going to ask me to teach in front of his United Realty uh, office. And then he, and, and he's always, he's going to fall in love with the systems that I've created and any agent that might not serve the purpose of Dwayne. He'll be like, you know what? You got to talk to this guy, Chris, and who knows, maybe he comes on our team and he becomes our top producer. Right. Right. And I, I can say that, when I when I flip the switch from worrying if someone's going to steal one or two deals to worrying about how I can help as many people as I can because they shouldn't have to pay the price I already paid to grow my business. They shouldn't have to go through calling eight, 18 months of Zillow leads, right? When I flip that switch, all of a sudden, like the weight of the stress and this anxiety just like went away. It was mm -hmm. like, and then hearing people go, Chris, you changed my life. Chris, like, thank you so much for teaching me this, blah, 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 you know, 
it's that's what it's about, man. This dude got three kids right here. You think you think I'm gonna be upset if, if I teach him my ways in 12 months from now? All of a sudden, he's in a bigger house with a bigger car, and his kids have the best Christmas you can imagine. That I'm gonna take that away from this guy here because I'm worried about one deal here and there. Like, who am I to? Who am I? If I have if I have this information, and if I have the desire, and I have the uh, the energy to help change other people's lives, wouldn't it be really, 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 really shitty of me not to do? That? Right. Yeah. Because I'm right. selfish enough to worry about one deal there. I don't know. That's how I that's how I flip my mind it and you know, self push it off. No, I get it. Because you 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 benefit in different ways. You know what I mean? Uh, you okay, know, like exactly how you mentioned, like if you if you lose one or two sales now because they're copying what you do, fine. But you might now bring on a new realtor who's heard about you and that you're a good team lead, et cetera. And that new realtor on your team might make 10, 20 sales for you, et cetera. Oh, we lost Chris. Oh, he's back. We got him right here. There we go. I don't know what you guys heard or not, but it froze. And then, yeah, it, fr it froze for like a second. But um, no, I was, I was just saying that, yeah, you know, you just benefit in different ways now versus like, yeah, I might lose one or two sales to another team. But you might bring on a new person that likes you as a team leader, joins your team, and that person now makes 10, 20, 30 sales for you, right? Or just the fact that that person now has gratitude and appreciation for what you've taught them. But you always benefit no matter uh, which way you choose to go about it. Well, think about it deeper. Let's say I teach, like, so I'm, you know, I'm always. Ma trying to master the craft right in a unique way what if i teach all these tools to denise and now denise's life gets crazy better right and now she has a son and she's like you know what chris taught me that this 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 and this this bit of knowledge and then her son takes just a, one piece of that and he grows his life and he meets a girl and they have a family and now they're four or five kids or how many kids they end up having or whatever their lives get better so by helping as many people as you can that tree compounds of how much you can change the world. So if you enter the world thinking about how much I can take from others, as opposed to, you know, then like, A, you're an asshole, right? But but if you have the opportunity, but if you have an opportunity now to go, okay, I can teach as many people as I possibly can thanks to this internet thing. And the cream rises to the top and the people appreciate it and grateful. And now I can take this and then they can share this information down. And you could change endless lives. And isn't that... Isn't that what it's about, right? You know what I mean? Not to get too corny. But anyways, that's the flip. <laughs> but that's real, though. That's where the flip in my head happened. And I, if mm -hmm. I want to think of it selfishly, it's helped me back. I don't know. Yeah. That's, I, I, yeah, that's how I look at it now. No, you're right. I mean, uh, if you, you got knowledge, you got to share it, man. I'm, I'm the same way. I, you know, I, I don't mind teaching what I know. And especially because if you're confident in what you do, you know it's not really yeah. going to affect you that much, right? Or... I the way I see it too is like I always see it like it just because I like challenges. So like, I, if I can bring on more competitors, it challenges me to work harder to be better, right? If I yep. can bring on a few new people that are doing the same thing as me, all right. Well, now I gotta get a little bit more creative. I gotta I gotta work a little bit harder to sustain my position, right? So you, there's so many ways you could spin it, but at the end of the day, yeah, like just at least sharing your knowledge is is never a bad thing. No, but you should pay for it. So pseudopagenet.com. <laughs> if you want to get your training, you got to pay for that. Uh, we are coming out with version 3.0. <laughs> Three well, you, honestly, by the way, I charge I should be charging a lot more for that mm -hmm. because because payers pay attention, right? Payers pay attention. And when I was giving away for almost nothing, you would look and like no one was not a lot of people using it and it was a lot of cancellation, but every time I increased the price on it, you you'll notice that the uh, the watch time goes longer and these people's businesses get better. So I was looking at it this way: like, if I charge, I don't know, whatever I charge right now, it's sixty nine or sixty seven bucks a month, and you pay for a year. So let's say you pay for I don't even know how much it is seven hundred bucks, whatever it is, and then you take that knowledge because you pay that that seven hundred dollars, and that knowledge made you a hundred grand because you paid some money. Now you're gonna actually do it, right? You so now you made a hundred grand from that. Wouldn't that do you serve you a lot better purpose than if you got free and because it's free, you took it for advantage and didn't do anything with it? Mm -hmm. So I would argue I should be charging more. I should be like, this thing is 10 grand and you have well, to do it. And they'll make 250 grand. 
But that that's a real psychological effect. I was reading about that the other day where like you if if you price something too cheap, people don't see the value in it. Yeah, right. It. If you if it's too expensive, it might be out of their price range. So if you hit that sweet spot of where like, all right, I paid enough money where like it kinda hurt my pocket a bit or like it's affecting me a little bit, like it, you want to try a little bit more to like use it, right? But if you pay the dollar for it, you're like, eh, it's not. It's really... like, it, well, dude, look at college. Look at college. People spend what hundred grand on a college education, but they yeah. won't spend a hundred dollars on a training that can make them a hundred grand in a year. It just right. baffles me. It's just the way their minds are looking at. It. It's like, hold on, you paid a hundred grand so you can graduate a uh, hundred grand in education. You can graduate to make forty for the first five years if you get a job. But you won't pay sixty-seven dollars a month to make a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> it is just weird, right? It's just the way that are that the way that we're wired. Colin right, just yeah. had a mind fuck right there because he just came back. He <laughs> went <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the thinking pose. <laughs> you know what? Too? I just never. Uh, you know <laughs> the the college thing happens automatically for so many people. They don't even think about what what what's after high school. College, right? college. They just find mm -hmm. the money, right? So it's like built into the fabric of society. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're... People don't realize it's it's not an option. Like they and, and a lot of it is the blame of parents as well, because a lot of parents will pressure you to go to college. They're like, yeah. all right, you gotta go to college and you gotta study for four years and get your degree and then become a doctor or whatever. And that's just built into society, right? Mm -hmm. But People just don't know there are that there are other options. So once you expand your knowledge a bit and you see that there are ways to do other things, but at the same time you you don't want to promote don't go to college or don't go. To <laughs> <laughs> you just you want to promote that there are other options. That's what you want to do. <laughs> well, the last time I did that in this story about Cracker Barrel, remember I was telling you how I was teaching my kids about business, and then they're yeah. like, the moral of the story: don't ever get a job. Or don't ever go to college, whatever the more is there. Right. You over, start a business, right? Yeah. Start a business. That was the more. And my, my wife looked at me like like she was Medusa. <laughs> like those snakes just came out of her head. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, babe, you're doing pretty damn good with that mindset. Let's be real. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just so anyways. Oh, so it's an hour. Oh, we hit our hour spot. That's where we try to wrap up. Honestly, I can I can go on all day, but uh, whatever. It's an hour. That's enough. But uh, Denise, you have anywhere anything to share besides? Okay, first off, you found a man, and then you're gonna go to the new beach, right? Or are you going to the new beach to find a man? Oh my god! Colin, see, here's the thing with her, Denise. I've known Denise for what? It has to be a decade now, right, D? Mm -hmm. a decade. Okay. And <laughs> a decade's a long time, but ten years. It so is I'm a long time. And with. I don't know anything about this girl. Nothing. That's not know. true. <laughs> I know she has a son. I don't know anything. I don't know what you do during the day. I don't know. I, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know what you do on Friday nights. I don't know anything. I don't know if you have a man. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. You can't crack this nut, Colin. You can't. Ten years. <laughs> Ten years. So, so at the end of the podcast, he always just asks a very personal question to try to understand Denise a little bit more intimately. <laughs> and she never so answers. He always, he always asks, "Do you have Denise? A Denise, did you find yourself a man yet?" I say, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight. You can find me on IG at Denise Lecky on Facebook, Denise Lecky, all social media platforms. Denise, uh, how are you gonna let, let's get real though how are you gonna sit here and tell your story to the world if you don't tell your story to the world is that kind of the point of this it's like, my just, story uh, she's a mystery yeah, they, that's that's what's attractive it's like the mystery and we got to find enigma. out and dig <laughs> it's an enigma <laughs> we know more about colin in one hour than we know about you that's not true <laughs> yeah he worked at at&t he, he, he did three he has three kids <laughs> he he's with someone. I don't know if it's male or female, but he's, many, but he's you with know someone. How many kids I have? <laughs> yeah, but ten years it took you to get to know that. Not, give it a little, uh, give it another decade, man. You'll find it out a little bit more. Hello, <laughs> hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> Colin. Uh, before we leave, uh, where can people find you? Any shout outs, etc. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me on. By the way. A good podcast. Mm -hmm. Uh, please find me, reach out. It's Colin Lead 
Instagram, Facebook. Spell it for the people. Uh, Co-L-I-N, like Kaepernick, mm-hmm. and last name Lead, L-E-I-D, all together. There you go. E-I-D. So if you're All looking right. for a, uh, a place to buy or sell in the Southeast Florida market, you first go to Denise and me. And then if we're not available, you reach out to just ki- <laughs> just kidding. You can call him again. Someone's going to be attracted to your personality. You hate ours. And that's the guy you call, yeah. right? We all attract who we attract. <laughs> yes, sir. Even at nude all beaches. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's Where's the show, the ladies and part? gentlemen. <laughs> what? what? Where is it? Where? We'll talk about we'll we'll talk about that after the show. <laughs> Josh mu- Josh must need to use the restroom with something because he's like he's trying to he's trying to end this thing quick. Hey hey, I know you got to go to sleep. That's why I do. I actually got to eat dinner. You know, I got to eat dinner. exactly. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's the show. If you want to watch it on uh, our, our if you want to see our faces, you can watch it on YouTube at the Josh and Koozie Show. If you want to listen, it will be available on all streaming platforms uh, every Tuesday, early in the morning. All right, ladies and gentlemen, have a good one. See ya.